<clears throat> hey YouTube, this is Steven with Simple Tesla Life. Welcome to my channel this morning. Uh, it's good to have you here. I'm on my drive into work and thought I'd share a couple more things. First of all, for those of you that um, watched the video yesterday, my wife did come home last night, so that was good. And uh, the thing, the topic I thought I'd talk about this morning um, has to do with um, what initiated Elon's initial tweet about the, you know, building a, a, a drive unit that would last a million miles and the, the car, you know, really being engineered to go a million miles. And what started that tweet or what initiated part of it was, um, you know, there was some conversation, I think, back and forth about this idea of the autonomous, fully autonomous vehicle that can go to work for its customers. And actually the asset then becomes a money making uh, asset rather than a just a, a depreciating asset. Um, I think as, as many of you know, you know, um, with uh, software as a service and, and uh, services like Uber now that are prevalent in our society, um, it makes it very easy for, for people to, you know, make additional income, you know, going out and becoming in their own taxi service. Um, that, you know, that's essentially what Uber is and Lyft. Um, well, what Tesla's talking about here is is uh, being able to in, uh, take the full self-driving and fully autonomous capability of a Model 3 and put it to work in that model. And, and so, um, and there's a, a couple of use cases that get talked about a lot. Um, I'm sure there's probably many more, but uh, the two main use cases are um, Elon has talked about having uh, Tesla having their own fleet of Model 3s that would be if you will, their own Lyft or um, Uber service. And those cars would not have to have humans. They would um, self-drive themselves. So, you know, somebody hails a car on the uh, Tesla app, uh, they put their location in, the car drives to them, they get in, it, uh, you know, they can put in their destination through the app. You're not having to deal with the person, the car is self-driving and it takes you where you need to go. And the person pays for the, uh, you know, for the ride. Uh, all of that done fully autonomously and um, the, the, the tweets I've seen and some of the kind of back and forth discussion is they could do this at half the cost of what it costs today for an Uber or a Lyft. You know, so whatever your ride is today that you're, you're taking Uber or Lyft on would cost you half that. Um, I mean, that's significant. You know, 50%, I, I'm sure the savings is a lot of that's in the... Um, in the labor cost, right? Because if you're not having to, to have a driver that is driving the car and the, and a person can go off to say their, their work, their real job and let the car go off and work for them, then that's a, I mean, that's a gain right there. Um, so the, the two models were Tesla having their own fleet of model threes that would become sort of an, uh, a competitor to Uber and Lyft. And then again, individuals, private individuals who would choose to, uh, have their car go off and do some period of time um, work for them, you know, as a car service, right? So again, you could put your car into the uh, Tesla fleet or maybe it's the Uber fleet or the Lyft fleet. Uh, you know, again, I, I can't speak for what those companies are going to do and what they'll allow in the future. But, but again, I think once uh, regulators are on board with this full self-driving um, technology, all those barriers will come down. I mean, I, I think that in fact, I think they'll fall pretty quickly. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll touch on this just quickly as well, because I know I'm sure a lot of a lot of you are skeptics about the full self-driving capability. And I guess the only thing I, I would say to that is, I, you know, I am. Look, if we can send rockets into space, and oh by the way, you know, Elon SpaceX was the first company to take a a, a rocket. A single, well, I don't know. Maybe they are multi-stage, but a but a rocket that uh, can take a payload up into space, launch it into space, and then bring that um, that rocket canister back down to Earth and land it on a launch pad where it took off from, or or in the ocean. I, to me, when I, I when I saw that, I was I was blown away. The technology that 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 his companies are, you know, developing. Are truly incredible. So I, I think if anybody is a skeptic, I would I would just point to <clears throat> there are plenty of use cases where software and neural networks and the computing power that you need in these chips 
has reached a point where these types of things that I guess we've, you know, my, again, my generation, the, the, you know, the, the idea of a self-driving vehicle was, I mean, for anybody in my generation that watched the Jetsons or, you know, cartoons that would um, provide examples of what life maybe could be like, um, that was about the closest thing we could get to a reality of what we're now talking about here today. And, and I think that's, uh, this is, look, this is all very real. Um, and in fact, I, again, I, I would say that full self-driving is a killer uh, feature for Tesla. And they are so, so, so far ahead. Again, I did a, I did a full video on the full self-driving computer. I would encourage you to go back and watch that. But a, a video showing how Tesla is leaps uh, ahead of the competition because of their investments in research and development and technology development for computer chips that they've designed and built so the both that, so they have both the software and the hardware to implement a fully autonomous self-driving experience so coming back to this idea of you know that we've all we all think about vehicles as a depreciating asset we buy them we immediately drive them off the lot they lose anywhere from you know maybe if you're lucky they'll lose eight percent five to eight percent of their value but in you know in, in i'm sure in terrible cases they may use lose up to ten percent or more of their value and just driving them off the lot and then you know you spend years you know five years traditionally to pay off this this asset and what what you're left with at the end of five years is something that at least has some value certainly but that value doesn't increase it, it keeps going down right it's an asset that depreciates and it will depreciate unless it's some kind of you know investment car specialty car class a uh, um, classic collector's item sort of a thing right and, and and even those right I mean you you have to usually invest in them to keep have them keep their value or maintain their value so this is you know people I think the, the general public you know they don't they can't wrap their head around this idea of a, of a car that could go work for them um, so when people look at a Tesla and they think, oh, it's so expensive, right? That 40, you know, $40,000, or if you're talking the long range all wheel drive, then I'm looking at getting just, just over $50,000, $50, I think 52 with full self driving or somewhere around that. The, the idea of, oh my gosh, that's so expensive. Look, I get it. It is, it is expensive if you're comparing it to a $30,000, $25,000 car. But it's not a twenty-five or thirty thousand dollar car. What twenty-five or thirty thousand dollar car will drive, and it was built for a million miles, and the power unit is, you know, being it will. It's designed to last. The battery is designed to last three hundred to five hundred thousand miles, and you can swap out a battery and get another three hundred five hundred thousand miles, and. Um, and then it has just all this other technology on top of it, like the full self-driving, which now enables it to become an asset that makes you money. I, again, the general public has no idea what's coming. I think certainly people that follow Tesla, like people like myself, people that are on the periphery of listening to some of the news clips and snippets, you know, what they hear right now about full self-driving is, is they hear that it's associated with crashes. Um, and I'll, I'll actually, I'm going to save that for another topic another day because we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the, the, the reality versus the perception of what's happening right now with Tesla's um, full self-driving beta testing that's going on in their cars today. And we'll talk about, you know, the public perception. Um, Elon's, one of his quotes from the Autonomy Days presentation was, when asked about getting regulators to buy into full self-driving, he said, look, the data will prove that full self-driving is the way of the future. And his point was that when they when they show the, the data, the real hard data, right? Because they have data, every car that is on the, every Tesla vehicle that's on the road is collecting data about its driving habits, its patterns, um, it's it, and it's self-driving capability and and has all the technology the cameras around the vehicle to show that if there's an accident what happened right who who was at fault um, and what happened and when they're able to show that the number of accidents 
caused by a full self-driving vehicle is far below, I mean, not just a little bit, but far below the accidents caused by humans and the deaths that humans experience from vehicles that they drive versus that computers can drive. He, you know, his point is the public perception will change and people will demand cars that drive you or drive you where you need to go. That, that at some point, and you know, maybe that's, maybe it's 50 years in the future. I don't know when, right? It could be, could be a ways out there. So I don't think this is in the next five, 10, maybe even 15 years. I don't know. But in the future, at some point, the public will say, we don't, we don't want humans driving vehicles at all. We want computers driving vehicles and the safety factor will bring, you know, accidents down to just a very, very small number. Right. I mean, imagine, right. Think about that. That's, that's real life benefiting technology. I don't know. I look at this stuff. I am amazed that it's not more, there isn't more public talk about it. Maybe it's just because it's still quote in beta and certainly that Tesla is not a, uh, it's a small percentage still of the US auto base. Um, but look, this is the future. I, you know, when, when there were horses and the first cars came out, I, I'm sure the people, you know, the public that, that used horses and wagons and as their modes of transportation, I'm sure they were scratching their heads and thinking, oh, this is gonna fail, how can this, how can this quote vehicle be any better than a uh, a horse that I can you know feed and take care of and have this connection with? It's another you know uh, it's an animal that that I see its health versus this innate object that I had to put some liquid into. I, I don't know. I can imagine that the press and and all the public perceptions of of automobile technology were very interesting at the beginning. But that doesn't mean that the technology didn't didn't take hold because I mean, naturally it did, right? And we are where we are today with uh, all these cars on the roads and our society um, needing needing and demanding the benefit of of uh, vehicles that can drive us from point A to point B. So anyway, so that's my thoughts on that. I I would encourage you to take a look at. Um, uh, some of the latest uh, tweets about this idea of having your car be an asset that can make you money. Like I said, I'm sure the use cases, you know, delivering food, you know, put uh, put pizza, having a car, a vehicle equipped with uh, pizza ovens or pe not pizza ovens, but pizza warmers, and you throw them in this vehicle and it goes out and delivers the, um, the pizzas. You go out vehicle shows up you get a text that says it's there you go out and you grab your uh, pizzas out of a oven cabin that's that's just for you that you have a code to so you can get in and get your pizzas i mean look i mean that's that's a very real use case right for a papa john's or any of those companies so i just think this is just like we are on the verge of a technological just revolution in terms of change and how people think and all these things are happening at the same time and it's going to be fascinating to watch it all unfold so anyway stay with me on my channel we'll talk about these things and i hope you enjoy the content um hit subscribe if you if you do like um hit the like button um if you if you don't you know feel free to, to leave your comments i'm i'm all, uh, certainly interested in hearing what kinds of content you'd like to see what kinds of questions you'd like to have answered so please leave those in the comment section and i appreciate appreciate your feedback and we'll talk to you tomorrow thanks